cow cat, are you excited for Daytona Day? Oh my god, bandwagon kid, why are you back? I'm just excited for NASCAR's new format. It's gonna be really exciting. And I'm also really excited to see who's gonna qualify in the prestigious Daytona 500 pole. Well, the pole sitter's probably going to be Kurt Busch in the monster car because of the title sponsorship. And as for NASCAR's new format, they're probably all going to crash at the end of segment one, and the rest of the race is probably going to be pretty boring. Wait, who's in this race again? I ain't watched NASCAR since Dale Jr. went through the concussion protocol. Wait, how are you a NASCAR fan again? Uh, anyway, I hear that David Land guy who did the Rolex 24 preview is also doing one for the Daytona 500. It should help you not look like an idiot on social media. Wait, David Land, he did that Daytona Day video. I love that! Oh my god! It's NASCAR on Reddit! David Land! David Land can't make a NASCAR video! He thinks IndyCar is God! They told it was awesome! It was a good commercial! It was good for the casual fans! I can't believe Jack Clutch is the same thing as not David Land, but David Land was right, but he wasn't right, but he tried to clutch, clutch, clutch! I love David Land! Oh my god! Reddit got so triggered it spontaneously combusted. Oh well. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and enjoy the Bandwagoner's Guide to the 2017 Daytona 500. We start our guide with the 36 teams locked into the Daytona 500 through the charter system. Car number one is driven by Jamie McMurray for Chip Ganassi Racing. McMurray won the 2010 edition of the Daytona 500. One of three drivers in Penske-affiliated equipment, Brad Keselowski has proven to be one of the most prolific super speedway drivers in all of NASCAR. In his short career, Austin Dillon has seen the highs and lows of Daytona. In 2014, it was a Daytona 500 pole position. In the 2015 July race, he was knocking down the catch vents. 2007 champ Kevin Harvick is getting used to Stuart Haas Racing's new Ford bodies and Roush Yates engines. In his own words, if Casey Kane does not perform in the 2017 season, he'll be out of a ride at Hendrick Motorsports. Trevor Bain pulled off a miracle in 2011 when he took home the Daytona 500 crown. He'll be looking to rekindle a little bit of that magic for this year's race. Sponsorship woes were the low light of Danica Patrick's offseason. Luckily, at the last moment, Aspen Dental stepped up to cover the races left vacant by former sponsor Nature's Bakery. Denny Hamlin is the defending Daytona 500 champion, winning in the closest race in the history of the event. Hamlin, Toyota, and Joe Gibbs Racing are a potent combination. It would be foolish not to expect that this combination can pull off back-to-back -back victories in the 500. Ty Dillon stirred up a bit of controversy over the offseason when he signed with Jermaine Racing, taking the seat of longtime NASCAR entrant Casey Mears. 2016 was a season to forget for Clint Boyer. He'll be looking to turn things around with a great opportunity in the Stuart Haas Racing number 14, the seat that was vacated by racing legend Tony Stewart at the end of last year. The 2001 and 2003 champion of the Daytona 500, Michael Waltrip, will be making his final NASCAR appearance in this year's race. His traditional number 15 is adorned with a paint scheme celebrating his career. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is the second in a reduced Roush Fenway racing effort this year. He's looking to help bring Roush Fenway racing back to their glory days at the front of the field. One of the few major races in NASCAR that Kyle Busch has not won is the Daytona 500. With Joe Gibbs Toyota power, it's hard to pick against Kyle Busch to at least be a serious contender to pick up his very first Daytona 500 championship. In one of the most shocking off-season moves we've seen in some time in NASCAR racing, Carl Edwards elected to step out of the number 19 Joe Gibbs Racing Aris Toyota. In his place steps in the only international driver in the field, Mexican Daniel Suarez. Suarez won the very first Xfinity Series chase last year. This highly touted rookie should have the pace to fight for the win. 
Matt Kenseth was only a corner away from winning this race last year. The 2009 and 2012 Daytona 500 champion returns to a familiar paint scheme for this year. As DeWalt Tools reunites with Matt Kenseth, they are looking to recreate the success they had back in 2003 when Matt Kenseth won the final NASCAR points championship. Make no mistake, the team name says Wood Brothers Racing, but this is a Penske chassis. And Ryan Blaney will be looking to make the most out of this opportunity. The Wood Brothers 21 hasn't been in victory lane since 2011. Blaney will be looking to change that. Joey Logano won the 2015 edition of the Daytona 500, and he's been a contender ever since he joined Roger Penske's squad. Don't expect that to change anytime soon. Rookie Joey Gase is a full-time driver in NASCAR's Xfinity Series, but the Daytona 500 will be his first start in NASCAR's Monster Energy Series. Chase Elliott's up and down rookie season was personified in last year's Daytona 500. Despite qualifying on the pole, Elliott crashed out early in last year's race. A year older and a year wiser, Chase Elliott is certainly expected to run up front consistently in 2017. Throughout his career, Paul Menard has shown flashes of brilliance. Can someone say Dark Horse? Ryan Newman is perhaps the driver in the garage area that likes the plate tracks the least. Don't expect anything spectacular from him. Matt DiBenedetto showed some flashes of brilliance last year. It will be interesting to see how he gets on with Go Fast Racing. Jeffrey Earnhardt is the grandson of the legendary driver Dale Earnhardt. Jeffrey is one of two drivers to carry that name into this year's race and is looking to become the third Earnhardt to drive into victory lane at Daytona. Don't count out Landon Castle. Front Row Motorsports has been known to pull off some miracles at the plate tracks. After an impressive 2016 season, Chris Busher moves over to JTG Darty Racing. 2017 marks the return of David Reagan to Front Row Motorsports' second car. Kurt Busch is usually fast at Daytona, but just hasn't found his way into victory circle. It'll be interesting to see if the partnership between Stuart Haas Racing and Ford will be the final boost necessary to get Kurt Busch in the Daytona 500 victory lane. Kyle Larson finally got his breakthrough win at Michigan last year. But Larson isn't known as a plate racer, and famously said of Daytona Speedway, I hate this place. This is expected to be longtime Chip Ganassi sponsor Target's final year in NASCAR. Richard Petty driver Eric Almirola already has a victory at Daytona, albeit it was in the July race and not the 500. AJ Allmendinger is another one of the drivers that could be considered a serious dark horse for the race. Jimmy Johnson has won seven times in NASCAR's chase, and he's won two Daytona 500s. Johnson has to be one of the favorites to make it three. TriStar Motorsports and Cole Witt were one of the last teams to receive a charter. They're one of the only Ford teams that do not use the Roush Yates power plants. Rookie Eric Jones moves up from NASCAR's Xfinity Series to an expanded Furniture Row Racing, which established itself as one of the powerhouse teams last year. Oh, but for a few inches, and we would have been talking about Martin Truex Jr. as the defending champion of the Daytona 500. But unfortunately for him, in that race, he would finish second to Denny Hamlin. You can bet your bottom dollar Truex is out for revenge in this year's race. Two-time Daytona 500 champion Dale Earnhardt Jr. makes his return to the sport after having to sit out the last half of last year with a concussion. Earnhardt would love to make his return to the sport a good one with a third win in the Daytona 500. And the final chartered team, Levine Family Racing with driver Michael McDowell. This combination has been known to be sneaky fast at the plate tracks. He could be a dark horse for victory. Now let's take a look at the teams that will have to race their way into the Daytona 500. Two of these teams will not make the 40 car starting grid. 
Tommy Baldwin Racing is making a one-off effort with Elliot Sadler, who is a stalwart of the NASCAR Xfinity Series and a former veteran of what is now known as the Monster Energy Series of NASCAR. Sadler is known as a pretty good plate racer and could surprise come the end of the race. Timmy Hill has entered Monster Energy Series races since 2012, but this will be his first attempt at the Daytona 500. Reed Sorensen is a veteran of NASCAR, and in this car at the Fall Talladega race last year, he put up a big number qualifying first in first round qualifying. And while this team may not have race winning pace, they should be able to qualify pretty easily for the 500. Brendan Gaughan's full-time job is racing in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. His attempt into the Daytona 500 will be made a little bit easier because he has support from ECR engines. The LaJoy name returns to NASCAR with BK Racing's number 83 sponsored by Dustless Blasting. Son of NASCAR Xfinity Series legend Randy, Corey LaJoy will attempt to make his first Daytona 500. And perhaps the biggest long shot to make the field, the newly formed Gaunt Brothers Racing number 96 of DJ Kennington. This is the only car in the field powered by a Triad Racing Technologies motor. This will be one of the most interesting stories of Daytona's duels. Can Cinderella make it to the ball? So that was my preview of the 2017 Daytona 500. My pick to win is Matt Kenseth. I had a hard time choosing between Kenseth and Keselowski, but I believe it's going to be Kenseth who takes his second Daytona 500 victory. I have a hard time picking against Toyota, but I think Keselowski, in terms of a driver, is going to be much stronger, but I don't know if he'll be able to put it up against the TRD power of those Joe Gibbs racing cars. So let me know down in the comments what you think is going to happen in the Daytona 500, and if you're early, let me know who you think is going to get on the totally not rigged pole position for the Daytona 500. I know a lot of people are saying that it will be Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming back from a concussion. It might be uh, Daniel Suarez or Eric Jones trying to give a rookie a push, but I think, as I said uh, kind of comically with uh, Kyle Katz's voice, uh, that it will be uh, Kurt Busch with the Monster Energy sponsorship. I feel like that's the guy who's going to get the poll. So uh, we quote this video and see if I get it right. Uh, for those of you who have watched after the poll position has been determined for the Daytona 500. So, so thank you guys so much for watching. If you do enjoy these bandwagon guys, be sure to subscribe. I'm going to be doing them for many more races during the 2017 racing season. So thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like on the video. This has been David Land on YouTube, and we'll see you in the next video.